Psalm, chapter 144, a Psalm of David. Blessed means happy. Blessed be the Lord, my strength. I mean, we're to please God. We're to make God happy. And he's to be our strength. You don't get God happy by going to the gym. You don't get God happy by taking protein drinks. That doesn't please God. Your muscle, you know, give time your muscle will be rotten in a coffin. Paul says bodily exercise. You know, there's no use to it. I mean, it's healthy, but overdo it. My Which teaches my hands to war. Uh-oh. Jehovah Witnesses say we cannot go to, we cannot join the armed forces. We cannot go to battle because the Bible says, you know, thou shall not kill. What did David just say? It is the Lord that gives me strength, it is the Lord that teaches me to go to W-A-R, tell those cowards to give up their religion and serve in the military force. They're just, hey, listen, the leaders of that, that assembly just were cowards. Oh, what Bible verse can I have so we don't have to go to war? Thou shalt not kill. And that just shows you haven't studied to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth, you didn't rightly divide. Because what do you do when God told Joshua all the Israel, go in there and kill them all? Start with Jericho. God started at Jericho. God destroyed Jericho. Book of Judges. Judah comes up and says, Lord, who do you want us to go? Go fight. My fingers to fight. My goodness. <laughs> That's his friend. My goodness. Look at Exodus 33, 19. Exodus 33, 19. You know, when you say my goodness, it's really, a, it's really bad. I was a kid, I used, to, I used to hear that a lot. My goodness. Exodus 33, 19. And he said, God, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. You know who David's goodness is? God. You know where David learned that from? Moses. People come up to me all the time in, in, in a public ministry that we have. I'm good. Uh, wait a minute, hold on. The Bible says there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Well, you know, you know, style, I read my Bible, I pray, I go to church. But that's the goodness of Jesus Christ, you do that. that ain't your own goodness. You're telling me every 52 weeks, Sunday morning, you're just on fire to get up and go to church. Woo! 365 days, you're in your prayer book, ready to pray. Ooh. You've read your Bible all the way through. Every word of God, every word. From, Revela uh, from Genesis to Revelation. No, you haven't. And my fortress. That's a, that's a building, that's... Where you go, fortification. My high tower. That's a, that's that fortification. You look out. All right, I see the enemy coming. He's got horses. He's got chariots. It's just footmen. Oh, here comes here comes a caravan, a big caravan with all kinds of spices and stuff. My deliverer. And today the the Christian deliverer is the guy that brings the pizza. God's my deliverer. When I got trials, troubles, and tribulations, all kinds of anxieties and fears and troubles. Who's gonna get me through? Alcohol? Absolutely not. Illegal drugs? Absolutely not. Sex? No. God will deliver me. 
God's my deliverer, my shield. And according to Paul, that shield is faith. He, God, in whom I trust. It's funny, America, God we trust. Ah, that's a joke. Which God? Small G-O-D. Many today are trusting in, you know, Republican and Democrat office. That's not God. God ain't Republican and God ain't Democrat. Last time I checked, he's almighty. Who doeth my people under, under me. David's a military leader. David's a king. Lord. Start a new paragraph. What is man? Let me ask yourself, what is man? You know, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, there was a point God says, out of the waters, let there be marine life, fishies, whales, and it looks like out of the same waters, let there be falls that fly in the, in the earth. That was the uh, fifth day. On the sixth day, God said, let the earth bring forth cattle and, and cows and uh, sheep and dogs and Pigs and insects. But on the sixth day also, it said, God said, let us, the Trinity, make man in our image. And God took some dirt and made a man. He breathed his spirit into that man. That man became a living soul. And that image that we are of God is we have a soul, spirit, and body. We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We weren't made like the animals as evolution in the public schools teach. We were, a, I don't want to say a special creation, but we were set apart of the entire creation. You know, God made for the animals, he made males and females. And when he came to man, he says, you know what? It's not good that I should have man alone. And he says, man, go go look at the animals. Go find a help meet the man, animals. Name those animals. And he said, you know what? There was no, no help meet found for the man. And he put the man to sleep and he opened up his side and took the rib thereof. He didn't do that for save the whales. He didn't do that for the platypuses. And out of man, he made the woman. There was a special interest God has in his creation called man. No animal has an eternal soul, though what you want to believe, and all dogs go to heaven, that's a lie. God breathed into man. He didn't breathe into the animals. God breathed into man. He became a living soul. What is man? That thou takest knowledge of him. Christ did not die on the cross for dogs. Christ Jesus did not die on that cross for your hamster. The Lord Jesus Christ did not go to that cross for your kitty cat that was hit by a car. And when you say kitty cat and hamster and dog are in heaven after their death, you are lying. But man, or the Son of Man, and that's a, that's a that's a famous title that it was used by the Lord Jesus Christ and Ezekiel, a child of a man. Well, child of Abraham, I mean, child of Adam was was uh, uh, Cain and Abel, and Cain killed Abel. And he said, God's given me another child to replace uh, Abel that Cain killed. And that godly line of Seb would bring forth the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we read in the scriptures and we set forth the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Judah. We see the devil attacking that line because that line is the line of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ said, I come to seek them that are lost. Don't you dare water down the gospel that Jesus Christ will save animals. Your dog and your cat have paws, and according to the Levitical law, 
An animal that has paws is unclean. And if your dog or cat goes to heaven, you are saying heaven is unclean. Well, we're under grace. Uh, Paul says, when I went to heaven, I heard the language of Hebrew. The only animals I see coming out of heaven is those horses. I don't see them going back. But man... If a man believes on the Lord Jesus Christ gets saved, he's absent from the body and present with the Lord. That says nowhere else for any creature that thou makest account of him. Every single man, they're going to give an account. Jesus said, every idle word shall a man speak, he shall give an account. A parrot is not going to give an account of what words it says. Some parrots can talk. They won't have to give an account. Man will. Man is like unto vanity. Emptiness. Void. Yeah, and these people, I'm number one. I'm the greatest. I'm the, you know. You're nothing. You were even put in this planet by your own will. You were here because of your mother and father. And then one day, if the Lord tarry, you're going to die. You're going to go to a hole. In the you're going to go dust. One way or another, you're going to become dust. And all the trophies and all the money and all the riches and all the fame can't go with you. And yet, there's, you know, they say, you can't take nothing with you. Yes, you can. That's a lie. There's one thing you can take to heaven with you. Lost souls that you help come to Jesus Christ. I said lost souls. You can take a man's lost soul that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved. That will go with you to heaven. His days as a shadow that passes away. Very short. You say what? 12 hours of sunlight would be a shadow. Verse 5, second advent. Bow thy heaven, plural, O Lord. And come down, touch the mountain, and they shall smoke. The second advent. David was a prophet. I can assume that David thought that was Calvary. <laughs> I wish you stopped it. No, I love kicking. Cast forth lightning. I like that. I love lightning and thunderstorms. And scatter them. Shoot out thy arrows. You know the Antichrist doesn't even have arrows? He comes with a bow. He comes with a with a, a crown. He has no arrows. He's coming with peace. You know, they're just some kind of signed a, a peace treaty with the UAR and all that. I'm like, all right, is this it? Is that the Antichrist? We're bringing, I mean, they're talking about peace in the Middle East. Is it, yeah, all right, this is it, or peace, peace, there is no peace, saith the Lord to the wicked. Either or. Oh, you got such a down. It's either the peace ain't going to last, or the peace is, gonna, is, is, is the Antichrist bringing them in. It's either or. Are you excited? No. I'm excited if the fact is it's going to bring in the Antichrist. Because I'm out of here. And it's just another piece. Uh, this, this piece between the UAR and Israel, it's the fourth one. And in order to have four, you have to have three that failed to have four. People, you got to wake up. And destroy them would be the enemies of Israel. Send thy hand. So, what I've always taught you about the right hand of God when we see that, Jesus Christ. You know, you can never say, I'm in the hand of Jesus. We are the hand of Jesus. Send thy hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of great water. That's just troubles and problems. I'm, I'm sinking, Lord. I'm going down for the count. Also, Revelation about that Babylon, uh, the, the mystery Babylon, the waters are described as people's tongues, late nations, and languages. 
So in either case, with Scripture, with Scripture, it's either, Lord, I am just so overwhelmed in troubles and problems, or Lord, I've got so many people against me. From the hand of strange children, so that waters may be with revelation. People, strange children would be Gentiles. Throughout the Bible, the stranger, the church, had to be Gentile. Or, no, I'm not playing golf. How about the strange children that the angels came down and mated with the, with the, children, with the daughters of men and made the giants? And some of you think, well, you know, the giant, it was the children of, of Shep. They wouldn't be strange. Who did David battle throughout his life? Giants. Where did those giants come from? It came from the from the angels mating with the with the daughters of men. I don't believe that. Well, when you get two classes of when you got Ham, Sham, and Japheth coming together making children, they didn't produce giants. Something else stepped in. And we don't have the scriptures for that. That's a whole other study that maybe I'll do later. So, strange. Gentiles or David's life or David's life would have been those giants. One giant was a father to the giants and he was a brother to the giant. He made it with his own wife who happened to be his own mother. That couldn't happen. That happened in the Corinthian church. The kid's son made it with his with his wife. You gotta read your Bible, people. Whose mouth speak is vanity, like emptiness, nothing. They have that's what that's what people talk today. You listen to them. It's nothing. Oh, about the ball game. Yeah, so what? What's that going to do for you? It's about, it's about my job, my career. What's that going to do for you when we're out in New Jerusalem? <coughs> Excuse me. Or you're out in hell. What, what's your job going to do for you? Did you know there was a sale at this store? Oh, they're having, you know, buy one, get 14. For, what's that have to do with anything? What glory does God and Jesus Christ get for that? And again, Jesus said, every idle word man shall give, shall give an account thereof. Who is this coming a day for a lost man? Aren't you glad eternity starts before the great white throne judgment and time stops before that? Because all eternity in the great white throne judgment, man, Jesus said, will give an account for every word. I feel sorry for politicians. I feel sorry for phony baloney preachers. And their right hand, their right hand, is the right hand of falsehood. Now, a right hand in the Bible, and you know, people who have a right hand, that's a strength hand. That, that's your hand of strength. I just barely can do anything with my left hand. I'm right-handed. Some people are both. But mo most people, they're right-handed. Like me, I can't really do nothing with my left hand. And the strength of your arm, the arm that has the strength, you are involved in falsehood. Anything that is false, lie, that's your strength. I'm glad that's not me. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God. Have you done that? Have you made up in your heart your personal song has never been written down. You know the best way to do that? Get yourself instrumental classical music or instrumental hymns without the word. And just sit and read your Bible and pray. And, or when you're having a quiet time, just sit there with that instrumental hymn or, or classical music. And just put the words to your own that no one's recording and give God the praise. And the only one recording it is God. 
upon a sultry instrument, an instrument of ten strings, a violin, a guitar, will I sing praise unto thee. David was a talented when it came to music. David would set up before the temple that Solomon built. David would set up the entire musical choir under Asaph and Heman. Of what instrument? And the Bible even says one place that David made up made his own inventions of, of musical instruments. It is he, God, that giveth salvation unto king. Who gives salvation? God. Queen Victoria of England professes to be a born again Christian and gives her glory to God. She said while she was while she was reigning, she said, I love to have Jesus Christ come back. I will get off my throne and give my throne to Jesus. Who delivered who delivereth David, God, the one that gives salvation. The one that saves kings, David said, who delivered David. Look at the third person there. David's psalm, a psalm of David, and David steps out of the picture and gives a personal testimony of David, written by David. And the Bible does that quite much third person. Who delivered David, his servant, from hurtful sword. And King Saul, the giant, the war. Um, I forget which group there attacked David. To keep him away from King Saul. And they grabbed all their, their wives and all that. God protected David. God gave David victory. God protected him from the sword of Absalom. You know, you know who David said my victory comes from? Comes from God. Rid me. And deliver me from the hand of the strange children again. Again, that could be those giants, or it could be Gentiles, <clears throat> whose mouth speaketh vanity. What did Goliath did do? The words of Goliath that recorded was just mocking God, and David put him to sleep with the power of God through that rock. God knew where to put that rock in, in Goliath's skull. It could be either or. It could be Gentiles. It could be the giant. And if it's the giant, the strange children, then that defiles those people who don't believe those sons of God were angels. And your misconception of the Bible. I'm sorry. Their right hand is the right hand of falsehood again. Again, that, that powerful hand that you got, it's just lies. Just lies. And he speaks about Israel, that our sons may be as plants grown up from their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones. He's saying, listen, may our children be like plants. Let them grow. Let them flourish. Let them produce other plants. Let our daughters be buildings. You know, the church is spoken of as, as a chaste virgin of Christ. So let our daughters be building. All right, so we're going to take the church aspect. Let our daughters be buildings. That's what the church says today. Come to the church. No, you're at, you are the church. And David says our daughters are the cornerstone. They're likened to buildings, and they're not buildings. Jesus Christ is our chief cornerstone. What is he, a building? No. Today's church, you would think he was a building. Many, many Baptists are going to be surprised at the rapture, that the rapture, their building is not going up, but the church will go up. I said at the rapture, the church is going up, but your building stays. The, the people go up, and the Antichrist will use your building. The Antichrist will applaud your billion, million dollar building project. Thank you, we'll use it. Go ahead. Build that great church building. Put all the work into that great church building. And the Antichrist will use it if the Lord comes soon. 
I can't believe you're saying that. I know. That's why if the Lord ever gave me a church, the Lord ever built me a church with a group of people, we'll never buy property. We'll rent. Why turn something over to San Antichrist? He says, let our daughters may, may be as cornerstone. And if it's a pyramid, that's the top of the that's the top of the building. The cornerstone on the pyramid is that very top piece. What's the imitation of America for the cornerstone being Jesus? And you turn the one dollar bill over and you see that little triangle's got the eye looking at you. The all seeing eye of God. The masonry, garbage and rubbish. Let the women be like Christ. Christ said, I'm the chief cornerstone. Daniel said that, that stone that was cut out without hands. Funny how he says oh, the, the women and the church is the bride of Jesus Christ. But you don't, you don't read your Bible. Polish after the similitude of a palace. You, you, those women, take those stones and polish it up. Make it all look nice. You're supposed to be a chaste virgin. You're supposed to be a clean virgin. You're supposed to be good and ready for the Lord. Don't you look good? Like a like a woman, a female, ready for her wedding. Everything's right. Everything's clean. Not the last seen church age. That our garners, our barns, and the only that's the first time that word shows up, and only shows up in Joel one verse seventeen. Garners, maybe four. A 40, first time that word shows up, all manner of store that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousand in our streets. That's millennium. That's millennium. Yet some churches will take that 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 plea out of Malachi, it's for the church. Eh? You give God 10% and he'll give you a complete roundabout, all exception, all expense paid, great storehouses of great plenty. And when Paul came to this end of his life, he said, just bring me the parchments. And I would assume that Paul died. You gotta be careful with scripture to you. That's millennium. That our oxen may be strong to labor out in the field. They're gonna be farming in the millennium. The sheep are gonna be for sacrifice. The oxen are gonna be plowing. That there be no breaking in nor going out. There's gonna be no thieves in the millennium. You won't need locks. You won't need chains. You will not need a police force. You will not need your weapon in the millennium. That there be no complaining in our streets. That's, a, that's the only time the word complaining shows up in the Bible. There is no complaining in the millennium. You know how we know there's no millennium right now? Because we're complaining. And you know you complain. David said early in Psalms, I make my complaint to the Lord. In the millennium with the Lord sitting on David's throne, you wouldn't dare complain. You got all the tomato plants producing tomatoes and cucumbers like crazy. I will be complaining. I'll be the one with a smile on my face. I don't know if they'll be making Italian dressing in the millennium, but that'd be, hey, I'll be happy. Bring me tomatoes and, and cucumbers and Italian dressing. I'll satisfy. Hey, I'll have both my wives, maybe a third wife with me in the millennium. I know we won't be married. I mean, he says we'll be like the angel, not giving the marriage, but my wives will be there because they're saved in glory. They're getting riches. They're getting inheritance, getting gold, silver, and precious stones. I'll be happy and great, great glory to God. Won't be complaining. I complain to the Lord now. Lord, I need another wife. 
Lord, I need these Christians to stop discouraging me. Lord, you hear my prayer? Have we been seeing it all day? But you say, Lord, you listening? Come on, Lord. That's complaining. You got something you're praying? Come on, Lord God, my child. Are you going to save my child? Come on, Lord God, my, my son's not saved. My husband's not saved. My, that's complaining. Complaining in prayer to God. Happy. That's the blessed, verse 1. Blessed be the Lord. Happy is the people. That is such a case. What? The millennium. The millennial reign of Jesus Christ is going to bring happiness. Why? Because God, Jesus Christ, is happy. And when God is happy, you that are of God will be happy. You know, they, 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 they lie to you. A happy wife is a happy life. You stole that from God. And let me tell you, a happy wife does not always mean a happy life. For some happy wives, that guy's got to drain his wallet. And he's not happy. But a happy God is a happy servant. When God's not happy with his servant, who then comes chastisement and we're not happy. Think about it. When God is pleased with you, when is he pleased with you? When you make him happy. Yay! Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Unsaved people think they're happy and they're only fooling themselves. They think their alcohol makes them happy and joyful. Not the next morning when they're throwing it up. Not when they have to work five days, come to the end of the week to get that money so they can buy more. There are some people out there involved in alcohol and tobacco. They're not happy. Why? Because they can't get no more money to get their happiness. Yet the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace. Long-suffering. Patience. The true happiness is to make God happy. And to make God happy is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Exalt Jesus Christ because that pleases God. That, that settles God. And that will settle and please you. Step out of lines. Our happy father has to be okay. Now he's got to be the father of chastisement. So we see another hymn here, wonderfully done by David. <laughs> 